And in this, you know, for example, if we look at the life of Imam Ghazali, may Allah be pleased with him. Imam al-Ghazali is one of the greatest scholars in Islamic history. And he is an absolutely amazing human being. What you know about him and what I know about him is only the tip of the iceberg. He was a remarkable human being. He was extremely handsome, he was charismatic, he was very gifted, uh, he did not live very long. They say that he hurt himself because of the fact that he studied so intensely in his childhood and youth that he damaged his health. But he was an amazing scholar with an amazing mind. And then, you know, he lives in the times of the Seljuks and Nidham al-Mulk and Nidham al-Mulk, may Allah have mercy upon him, he creates the Madrasa system, which becomes like the university system of Islam, based on Central Asian models that go back to the Buddhists. But he galvanizes that in a way that's very beneficial for the Muslims, and he creates, creates what are called the Nidhamiyas. These are great schools that are given his name by the Seljuk monarch. There's one of them in Nisapur, in Persia, in Sunni Persia, and Imam al-Ghazali begins to teach there. But he's so brilliant, you know, that he is then asked to come to Baghdad. And there's the great Nidhamiyya, the greatest of all these schools in Baghdad. And al-Ghazali has all kinds of students, and he's extremely effective. And then in his free time, he studies other things. His Tahafut al falasifa for example, and his refutations of the esoterics, the Baltiniyya, all of that he does in his free time. You know, he's teaching other things in his full time. He's writing, he's producing, he's doing everything. And then all of a sudden, he has a spiritual crisis. And that spiritual crisis, you know, when he is 20, when he's 37 years old, you know, this spiritual crisis remarkably, you know, um, occurs. And all of a sudden, he can't do anything. You know, it's almost as if he can't even speak. He can't even say the basmalah. It's like, what happened to you? You know, is it the evil eye? Is it sorcery? What is it? You know, but he knows in his heart of hearts and his brother Ahmed, who is also a great uh, master of the way, he tells him, this is a warning to you. This is God. You know, and, but what's happened here is that Allah took away the acquisition. That, that you were not creating these acts. You don't have the power over this. This is a gift that was given to you. And what are you going to do with it? Are you going to be proud? Are you going to be arrogant? Are you going to be ostentatious? Are you going to seek this world? So Allah just takes it away. Then Al-Ghazali, it's like, you know, he can't do anything. And this happens to a lot of us in our lives too, just so that we know that I do not have the power. You do not have the power. God gives it to you. Therefore, be thankful for it. Okay, and so then Al-Ghazali leaves and he goes away, you know, for a number of years, you know, to get his heart right, you know, to learn to know his Lord and to get rid of the world so that he can come back and then finish his life in the most beautiful way. He's a great human being. Interestingly enough, when, she, when Imam al-Ghazali leaves Baghdad, you know, to take his path, at the same time, a young youth who's 18 years old is coming into Medina to begin to study, and that's Shaykh Abdul Qadr al-Jilani. He comes into Baghdad at the same time that Imam al-Ghazali leaves.